But I'm really not concerned about the storms that we have in this area. I'm not afraid it's going to destroy my property or take my life. We really don't have to worry about hurricanes or avalanches around here, do we? And even though every once in a long while we may feel the results of an earthquake tremor, um, it's not going to change our lives, right? True, a tornado might come through here, but even that doesn't really have me too very concerned. As long as a person takes the proper precautions, a tornado probably won't take our life either. Odds are very low. How about unnatural disasters? Well, that's a possibility too. There are shootings in the area, but it never seems to be where I am or near where I am. And uh, the kind of Las Vegas shooting that happened, I don't figure is going to happen in a community like this. That's not the kind of place that we attract, it seems like. I mean, it's possible, but uh, don't really expect it. So why do we need a fortress? Why do we need a safe place? Because we're constantly under attack. Satan is coming after us. And all the devils are constantly trying to bring us down. Something with which uh, Martin Luther was very well aware. This is what he writes in the hymn we just sang. Though devils all the world should fill all eager to devour us. He was so very well aware of the devils being around us. And he uh, goes on to say... The old evil foe now means deadly woe. The old evil foe, of course, is Satan. And to put it in modern English, now means deadly woe. He's out to get us. He wants to destroy us. The devil wants to kill us. And uh, so we need to have protection. We need to have protection from the devils who are coming after us. But you know, there are some people who don't really believe there is such a thing as a devil. Oh, it's just a figment of people's imagination, they'll say. No such thing as devils. And boy, that's just what the devil would love you to think. Because if you think there is no devil, you're wide open to his attacks. Listen again to what uh, Luther has to say. Uh, speaking of the devil, he says, Deep guile and great might are his dread arms in fight. Deep guile. He is deceitfully cunning, the devil is. Oh, he loves to deceive. And one of his favorite deceptions, it seems to me, is to make us think that he doesn't even exist so that he can attack freely. No, we need protection. We need protection because he is very strong. By deep guile and great might, says Luther. The devil is very, very strong. With might of ours cannot be done, soon were our loss effective. You try to fight the Satan, you try to fight Satan or the devil by yourself, and you'll be defeated very, very quickly. He has much more power than we have. On earth is not his equal. None of us can stand up to him alone. On earth is not his equal. But there is one who's way beyond his equal who fights on our behalf. But for us fights the valiant one whom God himself elected. The valiant one is Jesus Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ himself. He fights for us. God's the one who put him into place to be ours. He is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ it is of Sabaoth, Lord, Luther writes. Sabaoth. I uh, think a lot of times when people sing this hymn, they get confused with the word Sabbath. Sabbath is not the word here. This is a different Hebrew word. Sabaoth is a plural word meaning armies. He's uh, literally a, a Yahweh of armies. He's quoting from 46 again, from Psalm 46, uh, both verse 7 and verse 11, where it says, The Lord Almighty. And literally, it's Yahweh Sabaoth, God of armies. That's the kind of protection we have. God himself fighting for us. And the whole heavenly host joining in the battle and supporting him. All the host of heaven, including the ranks of the angel armies who fight on our behalf. Those uh, angels who kicked Satan out of heaven in the first place when he rebelled. And who are able constantly to keep after him. But it's Jesus who defeats him. And Jesus defeats him all alone. 
All by himself he defeats Satan. And as Jesus was doing it, it didn't look very obvious, didn't look very good. Reminds me a little bit about uh, when that uh, not quite full grown shepherd boy, David, goes up against the giant Goliath with only a slingshot and a few smooth stones. And Goliath looks down on this little pipsqueak of a David and he laughs derisively. He laughs! He said, and this thing with sticks against me? Sticks and stones. Do you think Satan laughed as Jesus was on the cross? I mean, how pitiful he looked. How weak. He's dying on a cross. Satan must have thought he had the upper hand. And yet... Jesus was victorious. As he rises from the dead on the third day, it's clear that he has conquered not only Satan, but death itself. He is victorious. And he's the one who will reign over us. He is our almighty God. The world's prince may still scowl fierce as he will. He can harm us none. He's judged. The deed is done. The deed is done, all right. Jesus has accomplished it. He has died for us to take away our sins. He's risen from the dead victorious, giving life to all who believe in him. The deed is done. It's all accomplished. One little word can fell him, is what uh, Luther writes. Again, he's quoting from, from Psalm 46. The, you know, all the nations of the world are in uproar and so forth. But he lifts his voice. <laughs> and... Uh, the waters melt. Yeah, God is our refuge. He's our strength and ever-present help in trouble. He's always right with us. And because of all this, we don't need to fear a thing, do we? As Psalm 46 says, though, therefore we will not fear, though the earth give way and the mountains fall into the heart of sea, though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. This is a picture of what's going to happen at the end of the world, isn't it? One of, the, one of the confidences we have, one of the things we can count on is good old terra firma. You know, the firm ground that we can always count on being there. What happens when the whole earth is being shaken? When the waters are roaring and foaming, the mountains are falling in the sea, and with all the waters roaring and foaming, the, the mountains quake even. It would seem to be a very terrifying sight. But according to what God tells us in Psalm 46, even when that happens, we will not fear. So with all those waters surging and everything, then comes the very next verse. Notice what peace and calm there is in this. For all that quaking and surging, now there is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. God is within her. She will not fall. God will help her at break of day. Beautiful, isn't it? Such peace there. Here where the waters are roaring and foaming, there the waters are peaceful. Streams make glad the city of God. This is the picture our Lord has painted for us, for us to enjoy, for us to be at calm and peace, to know he is with us. Oh, yes, nations are in uproar, kingdoms fall. He lifts his voice. The earth melts. Remember Jesus and his disciples when they're in the boat and Jesus in the back of the boat sleeping? And the big storm comes up, the powerful storm, powerful winds and waves, and the disciples couldn't make any, any advance against it. They're afraid. These who are experienced navigators are afraid they're going to drown. And so they wake up Jesus. And you just imagine, he rubs his eyes and he looks at the storm and says, Be still. And just like that, that powerful storm is silenced. That powerful storm is neutered. There's nothing, it has no more power because Jesus just spoke the word. That's what Psalm 46 is talking about. He lifts his voice, the earth melts. All that raging and foaming, and he just lifts his voice, and the earth melts. He is so in control. His word is so powerful. God himself is so almighty that none of the things, not even all of nature, can stand up against him. Be still. 
quiet, be at peace, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations, he says. You see, Jesus, Jesus is the one who wants us to go forward. He makes our, our marching orders very clear. From Psalm 46, verse 1, God is our refuge, and he is our strength. He's our refuge, our fortress, our safe place to protect us, to keep us safe. But he's also our strength. As Jesus gives us the marching orders that we are to go forward and wherever we're going and whenever we meet into people, show his love, tell them the good news about what he's done so that by his powerful word, more and more may be brought to faith. He not only protects us, but he gives us that strength because he wants everybody to be saved. He says, I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the whole earth. And the way that happens is as we bring his word to people so that they may know him and live in him. So, we have nothing to fear. The Lord Almighty is with us. The God of Jacob is our fortress. Amen.